on so that you know you can be uh, seated comfortably for about 10 minutes. That would be great. We're going to start with the hands in front of the knees, pushing the hands into the fronts of your knees. Drawing the crown of your head up toward the sky, close your eyes and find your breath. Finding ujjayi breathing, just like we always do. Breathing in and out through your nose. Draw the breath in with the muscles of your throat. Slow down your breath. And right away begin to soften the belly on your inhale. Engage in a much stronger, longer exhale. Most of you know my philosophy on a yoga for stiffer bodies class is that we are using inner strength and supporting muscle groups to stretch us out safely and effectively to move towards stability rather than over flexibility. So every single one of these poses will have a strong element, a strength element to them. And what I'd like you to notice is the tendency to want to engage in tensing up or clenching up or using the, our outer body to support ourselves, which just kind of keeps us stiff and, and overusing some muscles and not using others. So today when you notice that, please come back to looking for your inner body engaging as well as the muscles that directly support the stretch. And we'll talk more about that depending on what stretch we are in today. Notice the difference between supporting with integrity versus supporting with tension. When we support ourselves from the inside and when we support ourselves by consciously and deliberately supporting the stretch, rather than just tensing up around the stretch, you will see a, a lot of improvement very quickly. Let's take three more breaths and again, actively engaging in a stronger, longer exhale. Inhaling to fill up entirely, completely into your hips, into your belly, into your ribs, all the way up into your chest. And on the exhale, emptying out completely, drawing the navel in, even emptying out the pelvis, bringing out your lungs by cinching your ribs closer together and pressing the chest and the upper back toward each other as you move a little bit more breath out of your chest, your upper thoracic cavity as well. On your last exhale here, take the deepest, longest exhale possible. Hold empty. And while you're empty, see if you can engage even more. Draw the belly button back even further. This is the contraction we want to feel, especially when our back is rounded or especially when we are in a forward fold. So let's try that just one more time before we get started. Take an inhale, expanding. Exhale to empty out. Once you are empty, hold empty and ring out even more, engage even more. Feel that intrinsic engagement and know that that is what we will be looking for as we move through our practice. Go ahead and take a long inhale here. Come onto your hands and your knees now, uncrossing your legs. Once you're on your hands and your knees, take your inhale and extend your spine and your exhale to round the back. Inhale, extend. And exhale, fold and round. Once again, inhale, find that spinal undulation, and exhale, round your back just a little bit more than you have up to this point. Hold empty, hollow out your belly, find a deeper internal engagement. Remind yourself that this is what we're looking for each time we exhale. Stand up onto the path of your toes, now exhale, press it back to downward facing dog. Walk your legs out, bending one knee and then the other. 
dipping into one hip and then the other. And also maybe sinking into, just not sinking into the wrong one, but dipping into one shoulder and then into the other. If you bend one elbow and then bend the other arm. So again, just move in whatever way makes sense to you to massage out your body for this first downward facing dog. Take an inhale, in down dog now, and really press the heels down, straighten out both legs, make sure your neck is relaxed. Now walk your hands back to your feet and move right into a forward fold here. Make sure that your abdominals are strong and that you have actively found that booty on the bottom again. Weight is forward into the fronts of your feet, you're not hanging back. Make sure that you do feel like your sit bones are over your heels. You can bend your knees if you need to. Shake out any tension in your neck, your head, and your shoulders. And then grab your elbows with your hands, letting your forearms and your head weigh heavy so that you can lengthen a little further down. Remember here again, we are in forward fold. Our back is rounded. Our abs need to stay strong. So even when we're inhaling, try to inhale to the back of your body instead of the front of your body so that your abdominals can stay engaged, whether you're inhaling or exhaling. Take a strong, long exhale here. Dive a little deeper. Reach your forearms even closer to your toes. Crown closer to the ground. Good, and then bring your hands up to your thighs. Bend your knees quite a bit here. Once your knees are bent, sweep the arms toward the back wall. Open up the chest here. Breathe as deeply as you can into your ribs. Expand your ribs toward your thighs. And as you exhale, bring your hands to your thighs, round your back all the way up to standing. Sweep the arms overhead, take an inhale. And exhale, dive forward, bringing your hands back down to the ground to pull in. Inhale, spinal undulation. Exhale, fold your crown down toward your toes. Engage your abdominals, engage your quadriceps, make sure your shin bones are moving forward. Root down, this time come up with a flat back instead of rounding your spine, sweep the arms overhead. And right back again, dive forward into another forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, you can bend your knees, bring your hands to your shins or both. Exhale, fold, bring your ribs closer to your thighs, this time crown closer to the ground. Root down, rise up and sweep the arms overhead. And one more time, dive all the way forward. Now come to the earth, fold it in. Inhale to your halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Get those abs working, pull the ribs in closer. And moving down, rise up. Sweep the arms overhead. Good, this time dive forward right away. Once your hands come to the ground, walk your hands forward and move right back into a down dog. Right back into down dog. This time swivel your hips side to side. Moving your hips from one side to the other, your toes will point in the opposite direction from where your hips are going. Feel this stretching out and, and engaging the side of your torso. So your obliques are getting a little workout here. Take another deep breath in, finish that round, and bring it back on your exhale to a deeper down dog. Deep breath in while you are in down dog. Exhale to hollow out your belly. And once you are empty, jump or walk your feet to the top of your mat. And when you get there, take your inhale. This time, please keep your right foot forward, you're going to step your left foot back, just about three feet distance behind you. Square off your hips, and go ahead and round your back now over your right hip, right up quadriceps. So your, the front of your right thigh is engaging, the back of your right thigh is stretching. Your left heel for right now is off the floor, and both hips are squaring toward the ground. Keep your breath going here, hug into the line of both inner thighs. Hop off the back of your body. This is another rounded back position, so please make sure that you're following your exhale all the way to empty, that you are holding empty. And while you are empty, draw your ribs closer to your right thigh. Check in with your right quadriceps. They are just a 
directly supporting the stretch on the back of the right leg. One final exhale here. Root down into your right foot. Now lift your left leg up. Then move into standing splits now. Drawing your crown toward your right toes. Left leg reaches up toward the sky. Take a strong inhale. We're in another forward fold here. Please notice. Your back is lengthening abs and rounding at the same time, so it needs some support with your abs. Take one final exhale here. See if the left leg can lift any higher. Step your left foot in to meet your right foot. And fold it in. Step your right foot back about three to four feet distance apart. Make sure your feet are lining up with each respective hip. We are not lining the toes up with each other. Right, so your right foot is in line with your right hip, left foot in line with left. Keep your right heel off the floor on purpose right now. We don't want to hyperextend this left knee either, so make sure you are rooting down to the pads of your left toes, almost like you're clawing the floor with your, with your foot so you feel the arch rise. Hug in with both inner thighs here. Dial the left sit bone back, hug both inner thighs to midline. With your abs engaging, use your core strength to bring your ribs closer to your left thigh. Make sure that you're not rolling into this left hip, right? Keep both hips hugging into the line by engaging your inner thighs. Take another strong exhale here. Bring your ribs closer to your left thigh. Transfer onto your left foot, lift your right leg up. And again, move into standing splits. Your right hamstrings are really strong here. Your left quadriceps are very strong. Front of left thigh, back of right thigh. Your glutes on your right leg are also really working here to keep that left leg up. And of course your core is drawing your ribs closer to your left thigh. Relax your head, your neck, and your shoulders. Take a final inhale here. And exhale, step your right foot in. Sweep your left foot and fold your crown down toward your toes. Notice how each time we go into this forward fold that you will be able to go deeper into this fold. Make sure your core is always supporting you. The more we do this, the more the body is ready to let go of the attention that we're usually holding. And it, you'll find that you're just gonna get looser that much faster. Take a final exhale here, dive even deeper. So at this time, step your left foot back about five feet behind you or just slide your right foot forward a bit. In this position, you're going to take a lunge. So start with a lunge pose with both hands to spray in your right foot. Push back through your left heel. Now hug in with both your thighs. And while you're hugging in, draw the right sit bone back so that your left hip bone dials down. Okay? And as that left hip bone dials down, make sure you don't collapse your leg down to the ground at the same time, right? So left glutes are active, left hamstrings are active, both inner thighs are working. Once you dial your right sit bone back, push back through your left inner heel at the same time. So this should already feel like a stretch. For most of us, this will already feel like a stretch. If you would like to go further, take both hands to the left side of your right foot. Slide the left foot back just a little more. And now drop onto your forearms for a low lunge position. Keep rooting all the same things, right? Rooting back to left heel, both inner thighs hug in, left glutes are active, left hamstrings are active, we're not collapsing the weight of our body down. You're actually going to feel like you're rising up out of that stretch a bit here because of your core engagement. Two more breaths. Keep all of those things that we just mentioned, keep all of that activation going so we can support the stretch, right? Rather than be here passively, which causes tension. Take one final exhale, reach a little further back. Go ahead and then come back up onto the palm. Bring your left knee to the ground. We're gonna stretch out our right hamstrings again. So once your left knee is on the ground, make sure that the pads of your left toes are also on the ground. Your right foot comes up. The tips of your toes are pointing toward the ceiling here. Again, we're not sitting down. We're pulling the pelvis back, but the sit bones point down at the same time so that we're not overstretching our hamstrings. 
square off the hips again. Both inner thighs come in. Dial right hip bone back, right sit bone back, dial left hip bone forward. As the inner thighs come in, engage your core, bring your ribs down to your thigh. Deep breath in into the back of your right leg. Strong exhale to dive a little further into your stretch. Good, and then come back up into a lunge. And once you are in that lunge, keep your left hand on the ground and open to the right side for a twisting lunge position. Once you are in this twisting lunge, make sure that again, we are not passively in this lunge. We're not sinking, we're not splaying out. It might, it might feel good, right, to just kind of be loose there, but really work on the integrity first, hugging into midline, letting that inner thigh engagement, right, dial the pelvis around. Once you feel the pelvis dial around, then you'll feel the lower core activate. Once your lower core activates, you'll find you'll be able to twist your ribs open to the ceiling. So we're using our strength to mobilize and ring out and open up here. Take one more inhale. Good, exhale, both hands down. Transfer onto your right foot. Lift your left leg up. Walk your hands forward now into a variation on butterfly. So instead of rounding our back now, as we did in, in standing splits, our spine is extending. The right leg is still active. Right quads are still active. The left glutes and the left hamstrings are still active. And you're rooting back to the pads of your left toes. Your spine is lengthening. Feel your back muscles firing. Take one more inhale here. Exhale, step your left foot in next to your right foot. With your abs strong, pull your ribs in towards your thighs. Shake any tension out of your neck, head, and shoulders. Soften your face, your jaw, your eyes, and your forehead. And let's do that same thing on the opposite side. Now we're going to step the right foot back about five feet distance back this time, or slide the left foot forward a little more, depending on where you are on your own mat. Good, hug into the line. Both hands are right now just uh, framing your left foot. And I like to kind of even push down with the palms of the hands so I can actually feel that I'm lifting up out of the stretch rather than sinking into my joints. Now push down, feel the core engage that much more, feel your pecs, feel your chest muscles engage here as well. And then start working the alignment. Both inner thighs hug in, left sit bone dials back, right hip bone dials down, back heel, right heel roots back. Feel all of that activation. If this feels like enough of a stretch for you, stay there. If you'd like to go further, bring both hands to the right side of your left foot, step your left foot out a little wider, and drop onto your forearms. Breathe into this stretch. If we are not breathing, right, then the body gets this really clear signal that we don't feel comfortable here. And even though we probably don't feel comfortable here, because there's a lot happening, we want to send the message that we're okay. Right, that even in this discomfort, we are okay in this pose. So that the next time we go into this pose, we don't meet it with resistance. We don't tighten up, we don't tense up. We remember, our body remembers, oh, okay, there's a lot of sensation and I was fine, right? So check in with your breath, make sure your breath is calming and soothing. Take a final exhale here. Come back up onto the palms of your hands. Drop onto your right knee, stay on your, the pads of your right toes, and begin to pull the pelvis back, not sitting down, but just back. And your left toes are gonna to point toward the sky, hug in with both inner thighs. The sit bones will point down, right? In other words, we're not over tilting, we're not tilting the pelvis up. Just point sit bones down, pull the entire pelvis back until you feel that stretch on your left hamstrings. If you overarch the back here, or you try to sit back too fast, we tend to overdo not only the hamstring stretch, but also our, um, we tend to overstretch the sciatic nerve. So we don't want to get sciatic nerve. Keep the sit bones drawing down, keep the lower core activated. Use your abs to bring your ribs closer to your left leg. 
Breathe into the back of your body. Breathe into the back of your left leg. One final exhale here. Dive even deeper over the left leg. Come back up into a lunge. Keep your right hand on the ground. Open up to the left side of the room for your twisting lunge. And again, just like you did on the opposite side, find stability first. Stabilize the pose, plug into your intrinsic support, and from that place, you will be able to unwind, open more, right? Legs start your twist. The pelvis dials around because of your inner thigh strength. You'll feel also the lower belly tone. Once you feel that engagement, start to ring out the lower belly and then begin to rotate your rib cage toward the sky as well. Take one final inhale here. Exhale, both hands down alongside your left foot. Push your palms down into the ground again. Lift your right leg up. Stay in an extended spine position here. Draw the crown forward, draw the right leg back. Left quads are active. They're pulling, the quadriceps are pulling the kneecap up and then moving the thigh bone back. Your shin bones continue to move forward here. You're creating a diagonal line in relationship to the floor with your foot being higher than your head here. So get the leg, the right leg to lift higher by engaging your glutes and your hamstrings. Feel that nice easy stretch on the right hip flexors. Take one more inhale here, lengthen out. Please feel your back muscles firing here as well. Exhale, right foot down next to your left foot. And with a strong, long exhalation, bring your crown even closer to your toes. Bring your ribs even closer to your thigh, to your thighs, I should say. Feel your back stretching, feel your hamstring stretching. Sit bones are pointing down. Lower belly is absolutely engaged. Take one final exhale here. Bring the ribs in even closer. Let inhale extend. This time we're going to step the left foot back. Once your left foot steps back, then we're going to bring the left heel flat to the mat and move into a triangle pose. So once your left heel is flat, Straighten out your right leg and make sure that both of your heels are on the same line. I actually need to slide my left foot back a little more. Okay, so once we open up into the side, we want the heels definitely lined up with each other. Your chest is open and we're in triangle pose. Triangle is a pose where you can feel very light. We don't want to feel heavy here at all. This is a pose, I'm choosing to do this pose today because I want you to feel the difference between hanging out your joint, so for a second just hang out and wait heavy, versus engaging, hugging to midline, and noticing the difference. It may not look any different in the pose, but you should feel a lot different, a lot lighter, and a lot more engaged. So always look for the stabilization before you find the stretch. One more inhale in triangle pose. Now bend it into your right knee, bring your right elbow to your right thigh, and slide that left heel back just a little bit further. Then reach your left arm over your left ear for extended right angle pose. Lengthening out from your left ankle all the way through the left side body up into your left fingertips. This right shoulder is not compromised. We're not sinking into it. We're not asking the right shoulder to take any of our body weight at all. Take one more inhale here in extended right angle pose. Exhale, bring both hands to the ground. Swivel your right toes to point to the left wall. Inhale to extend your spine here. Come up onto the tips of your fingers. Good, now round your back. Remember what we talked about, right? Abs are strong whenever the back is rounding. I'm gonna stay in this extension so you can hear me. You are going to direct your crown toward the ground. And as your crown draws downward, you can decide to keep your hands on the floor about shoulder distance apart. Or you can grab your shins, but just make sure that if you do, if you are holding your shins, that you're not pulling with your arms, you're engaging your core to bring you deeper, right? Engage the abdominals so that if your arms are out of the equation entirely, 
you're, you're still going to have your crown somewhere close to the ground. Strong exhale to make sure that you are emptied out there, hollowed out. Do Udiyana Bandha if you know Udiyana Bandha. Make sure your quads are strong here again. We're at another forward fold. Take another strong exhale here. Now inhale to an extended spine. Bring your left hand underneath your chest and open to the right side. All 10 toes will continue to point to the left wall. Open to the front of your mat with your left shoulder staying out of the equation again. So stand up onto the pads of your left fingertips if that'll help. All right, try to get your left hip to stay up in line with your right so that we're bringing out more from our rib cage and middle mid thoracic spine here. Take one final inhale. Good, exhale, both hands come down. Swivel it all the way forward. Good, and once you are forward, notice that your feet are about five feet distance apart instead of three feet as we started off with. But in this pose, you're gonna to try to bring that left heel down to the ground and probably won't get there, but that's the direction it's moving in. Square off your hips again. And see if you can go a little further into this stretch now that we're nice and warm. And really use your abs. Use your arms here a little bit on the floor. Kind of push it into the ground. Hug your inner elbows to the line through your pec spine so that your pecs help you get there as well. Good. Make this feel like you've just gone further than you thought you could go. Take one final exhale here. And step your left foot in to meet your right. Inhale to your halfway lift. Again, you may need to still bend the knees or hands to the shins or both. You may find that you can keep your legs straight now. Exhale, fold, reach your head down towards your toes. See if maybe your ribs can touch your thighs now. Take a huge breath. And a strong, long, emptying out exhalation. And draw yourself deeper in. Good. Let's do that same series. We're going to set the right foot back now. I'm going to swivel around. Set your right foot back. Press your back heel flat. Make sure your heels are lined up with each other. Straighten out your left leg and move into a triangle pose here. And we didn't talk about it much on the other side, but make sure you're not trying to reach down so far that you cave in which again feels heavy, right? And you'll know the difference. So you wanna to go to a place where the pose actually feels buoyant and light. You would get there by keep staying open, but also by rooting down, right? So make sure that both feet are rooting down firmly. Heels are dragging in isometrically toward midline. You start to feel more inner thighs, right? Your left side body is lengthening. We're not sinking into it. Right, feel the difference there. And the right arm is rising, pulling up, as though you're trying to touch the fingertips to the ceiling above you. One more inhale in triangle. Notice how you've lifted up out of all of your joints and how that feels much more light and much lighter and much more supported. Now go ahead and bend into the left knee, bring your left elbow to your left thigh, slide your left heel forward if you need to so that you can bring your left thigh bone parallel with the floor. Right arm reaches over right here. Root down through the outer edge of your right foot. Okay, if you're starting to sink into your shoulder like I was doing a second ago there, push down with your forearm or your elbow into your thigh. Feel your left side body activate. You wanna feel your obliques activate on the left because we're stretching the obliques out on the right. All right, look for those opposing muscle groups to support. One more inhale here. Exhale, bring both hands down. Swivel your toes toward the right wall. Take an inhale to extend. And as you exhale, fold your crown down toward the ground again. We are not in a hurry to take our next inhale, especially when we are in a forward fold. Check in with your strength first as always, right? Are your abs engaging? Are your quads firing? Are you, is your weight forward? Or are you hanging out in your knees? Right? Make sure that you feel no joint support. We want to feel like we are supporting our joints 
with our muscular strength, not using our joints to support the weight of our bodies. So please, please check in with that. No compromising of the joints. Take one final exhale here. Abs engaging, take your arms out of the equation. Get your abs to draw your crown closer to the ground. All the way down to the ground. And then we're gonna rise up halfway, right hand comes underneath the chest. Inhale, open up to the left side or to the front of your mat. Your crown is drawing as far away from your tailbone as possible. But, and you're going to try to keep this right hip up as high as the left one. We're moving in that direction, right? Keep rooting down through both feet. So there's this active decision to rotate from our middle back so that the ribs rotate while the pelvis isn't rotating with the ribs. Does that make sense, right? I'm still working on that myself, right? So always that little navigation, negotiation. Great way to just stay present and in your body. Take one final inhale here. Exhale, bring both hands down. Swivel all 10 toes around to the front. Again, make sure that your feet are about five feet distance apart this time. Feet are lined up with each respective hip. Hug into midline, do all of the things that we've already talked about. Make sure you're not rolling out into this outer left heel or outer left ankle. Hug in, root down especially through the inner edge of your left foot. Square out those hips again, and with your arms strong as well, push down into the floor with your arms. Hug in with the inner elbows. Use your pecs, use your abdominal wall, use your transverse abdominus. Bring your ribs to touch your thigh here. Bring your forehead to touch your left shin. One more huge inhale. And the strongest exhale you've got. While you're empty, go further. Know that you can go further. And then transfer onto your left foot. Step your right foot in to meet your left foot. Take that inhalation. Find greater extension here. And exhale, pull. Good. Stay in this forward fold now. Grabbing your elbows just like we did at the very beginning just to see how much further you can go now in your forward fold. Keep the hips over your heels rather than hanging back behind them. Make sure you're not hanging out the knees. Make sure you're not hanging out the Achilles tendon. Forward and down. It's called a forward fold for a reason, right? All of the movement is forward and folding in and down. Quads are strong, kneecaps are moving up, thigh bones back, sit bones down, shin bones we meanwhile are still moving forward. Take a final exhale here. Make sure your weight is more in the fronts of your feet than in the back. Use your core, bring your ribs in, release your hands down and see if maybe, maybe, right? You can now put the palm flat on the mat, put your ribs much closer to your thighs, and make the legs as straight as possible. Good. Wonderful job. Take an inhale to find greater length here. Plant your palms, jump back and walk back to a high push up position now. High plank. Take an inhale in high plank. As you exhale, bring your right knee in to touch your right elbow and back. And now bring the left knee in to touch left elbow and bring it back. Right knee to right elbow and bring it back. And left knee in and bring it back. Hopefully you're feeling your obliques and your abs. Do it one more time on each side. And then once you're there, bring your knees to the ground. Take your inhale to extend your spine. And your exhale to round your back. But once you're in a rounded back position, take an inhale to bring <clears throat> your right leg back and your left arm forward. Pull yourself apart into equal and opposite directions here. Hug into midline. Please notice that this is strength work. We're using our strength to draw weight out of our body. It is up to you how much you're willing to do that, but make sure you're not sinking. Make sure we're not relying on the shoulder. Right? Feel your muscles working rather than sinking into the joints. One more inhale. Pull yourself apart. 
And exhale the left hand and right knee down. Inhale to extend. And exhale round. Inhale, bring your right arm and left leg up. Exhale, pull the fingers forward, pull your toes back. Your gaze is at the ground so that your neck is neutral, right? We're not looking forward, we're not looking at the camera, there's not much to see. You're just pulling the right arm forward while you pull the left leg back. But you're really drawing the entire rib cage forward as you draw the entire pelvis back. Inhale into the space between your pelvis and your ribs. Your neck is neutral, but it is also lengthening forward. So your neck muscles are working to keep your neck long. One more exhale to really reach back with those left toes and release. Inhale to extend your spine. Exhale to round your back. And from there, we're going to cross our shins. Sit back behind your heels and bring your legs forward. This is when you might need a little pillow. We're going to continue in these forward folds. So I don't have a pillow, but I do have another yoga mat. So I just, I folded it in half, right? And then I just rolled it up. You can do that too. But hopefully if you're at home, you have a pillow, you can just grab, place the pillow underneath your pelvis so that you are sitting on the pillow in a way that propels your torso forward. So you can lift your sit bones up and walk them back a bit, right? Quads are strong, sound like a broken record, but really important here, right? Take an inhale to reach up. As we dive forward, it's just like you were doing standing. Now we're seated. Now the abs have to work a little harder and you're gonna feel strain here in your lower back in a way you didn't feel it when you were in the, in the standing pose. So don't go as far right away, right? Really notice that our body, when it's, when it's telling us things, it really likes it when we listen. And as soon as we listen and we stop and we respect, there's my edge right now in this moment, right? Breathe into that edge, breathe into that sensation, that kind of, I don't know, trepidation, right? That we feel in our body. And then on the next exhale, just allow yourself to go further. You'll go to that next layer where you feel another bit Twinge of trepidation again. Breathe into that trepida trepidation. Breathe with a calm, soothing breath, and then let your exhale take it deeper because it will. It will if we stay out of the way. We're not tensing up while we're trying to pull ourselves in, right? Give yourself one clear message that you can go further, but you're going further with integrity and with presence. And very slowly, you may notice Right, that you are able to bring your ribs to your thighs or get somewhere close, just like you did while we were standing. Breathe so deeply into your lower back that you feel as though you are inflating your lower back, like you have two balloons back here on either side of the lumbar and lower thoracic spine, and we're just inflating them each time we inhale. As we exhale, we're deflating the front as we hollow out in that hollowness, in that emptiness, we bring our ribs closer in. One final exhale in Paschimottanasana. Please relax your neck. I can't relax mine and you won't be able to hear me, but please relax yours. Bring your forehead all the way down to touch your shins if that's even a possibility. And then reach past your toes and with abdominal strength, lift your ribs back up, and extending your spine. Take your arms down alongside your hips, lift your pelvis up, get off of that pillow if you did have the pillow underneath you, and keep your knees bent just a bit. Take an inhale, hold on to the backs of your thighs now and lengthen out your torso. Pull the elbows back. As you exhale, start to lean back, but keep your chest open. Stay balanced on your sit bones because you may want to them out from underneath you a little bit more as well. Just make sure you're not rolling onto your sacrum, right? So it's a chest open, lean back, stay open, bring your heels up. If you'd like to, you can reach your fingers past your knees. Every exhale, draw an angle in and down. Every exhale, navel in and down. Right? What are we stretching here? Nothing. We're just working our abs to get our, our uh, Body heat up a little bit again. 
Taking one more deep breath in here. Good, now exhale, cross your left knee over your right. Grab your heels. And now we are stretching. We're also using our core stabilizers here. So keep balancing on your sit bones. Keep letting your body kind of teeter and totter. Left knee over right, your heels are rising, your inner thighs are engaging. And if you feel like you can go a little further, lift your elbows up as well. Keep the shoulders down though. We're not doing this, right? We're not rounding your back and we're not shortening the neck. Shoulders down, chest open. Engage the abdominals to hold you in this balancing position. Engage your inner thighs to support the stretch that's happening on the outer thighs. If you don't feel that stretch on the outer thighs yet, bring the heels a little further up and pull the heels further away from each other. Bending the elbows to help you find that. Take one more inhale here. Now exhale, place the heels down to the ground. Somewhere alongside your hips, the closer your heels are to, are to your hips, the less intense this will feel. So if you do want to go a little bit further, slide the heels further away. Again, take an inhale, flat hip twist is another forward fold. Take a deep breath in, find your, excuse me, your back with your breath. Uh, activate your feet a little bit. Exhale, go to your first layer, just right where you first get into that, where the body says, not yet. Stop right here, not yet. Take a breath into that. Acknowledge that you just listened to your body. Then exhale. Let's go a little further. Right? It's again, it's a little negotiation. It's a conversation we're having with our body. Another deep breath in. Into the sensation you're feeling here and now. There's a lot going on, right? Lower back, all the way wrapping around the back of the hips, all the way down the thighs. Breathe into all of it. Notice it. Acknowledge all of it. Find a little deeper on your next exhale. Know the difference between forcing and allowing. Please know the difference between listening to your body and ignoring your body and overriding its signals. Neck, head, and shoulders are relaxed. Our intention here is to get our forehead to touch the knee. If that is not happening, you do have that pillow somewhere near you, I hope. You can place the pillow between your ribs and your thigh and just bring your forehead to the pillow instead. But please relax your neck. Take another strong exhale during Gopakasana. Diving deeper. How do we dive deeper? We don't pull, we don't yank, we don't force, we breathe. We exhale. We decide that we're going to stay empty. And while we're empty, we go further. And then keeping the abs strong while you lift. Lift up. Take an inhale as you sweep the arms up. But press your palms together. As you exhale, bring your hands back behind you. Plant your fingers into the ground. Your, your uh, arms are extending, but you're not locking out your elbows. And you'll notice how I'm just clawing the floor with the fingertips there. Squeeze the inner thighs together strongly. Open up the heart here so that now we're in an extended spine position, still in Gomapasana, giving our hips a real chance to stretch. Keep the inner thighs engaging. Feel your outer thighs increase. In, uh, the sensation in the outer thighs, I should say, increase. One last deep breath in. Please push down through the right outer thigh. And as you exhale, engage both inner thighs. And then slowly bring it back to neutral. Let's step your left foot to the outside of your right knee. Slide your right heel in a little closer. We're going to take a little spinal twist here. So you can start by wrapping your forearm around the front of your left knee and bringing your left hand back. If you feel like you can go further, bring your elbow to the outside of the left knee and then twist a little more. Remember your left foot is rooting down into the floor strongly. Your left hand is clawing the floor strongly. The twist originates at the belly. So your abdominals are doing the work here for you. And then you'll just wind your way up your spine. Take one more exhale to bring it up one more time. Inhale, bring it back to center. But uncross your legs and move back into Navasana. Right back in to our various shambhala pose. Just a few breaths here to warm up and raise the core temperature of the body. Make sure the abs know they are supposed to work today for us. Stronger, longer exhales. 
even one more moment longer than we usually take that exhale is huge in the message that it is sending it's sending your body so please please make that effort one last strong exhale really empty out here cross right knee over left reach down and grab your heels left hand to right heel right hand to left lift the heels up by the way knee over knee is not happening shin over shin is fine okay if you can get the knees over the, the right knee over the left please do bend your elbows squeeze those inner thighs together feel how that inner thigh engagement supports outer thigh lengthening we want to feel the length breathe into that length but do make sure that it is supported with muscular energy first Notice your spine, make sure that your spine is not rounded. Check in with your heart center, make sure your heart center is open. If you're collapsing here at all, you don't have to hold on to your heels. You can hold on to your shins. You can cross your shins instead of uh, crossing your knees. Right? Do whatever it takes to, to let go of the tension in your body that you think you need to hold this pose. Right? Take one final minute on your really lift the elbows, lift the heels, inner thighs engaging. Maybe fill a little more across the back as well. And then we release the heels down. Close into the hips if you want to go a little less intense. If you need to, by the way, go ahead and extend that lower leg forward. Take a huge inhale here in the Vipassana. Exhale, dive forward over your right leg. Stop at the first sense that your body is done for right now. Take an inhale into that place, into that sensation. Exhale, go one layer deeper. Until the body says, wait, hold up, let's check in. Right, relax your face, your jaw, your eyes, your forehead. Take a huge inhale, your body is relaxed. Your breath is relaxed. Therefore, the body relaxes around your inner strength. And then the inner strength can pull your relaxed body further. It doesn't force it, it doesn't. We don't need to go any further, but you will go further because the body is starting to really rely on and trust this inner integrity. Again, if you do have that uh, pillow, you could put the pillow between your ribs and your right thigh. Lay your ribs onto your right thigh. I'm sorry, onto that bolster. And then bring your forehead to the pillow or maybe to your right knee, right? Depending on where you're at. Just let this feel like a release. Please relax your shoulders. Please relax your neck. I would love to relax my neck. That's the only thing about these videos. I don't get to do the entire stretch with you. <laughs> so you guys take full advantage of that. In fact, shake any tension out of your neck and shoulders. Take one final exhale here. Maybe we go a little further. And then slowly rise up. Please leave your legs where they are. Sweep the arms over your head. Bring your palms out. Swivel your arms through the shoulders and, and claw the floor, just like we did before. We're still engaging our inner thighs. We're pushing down the outer left knee so that it feels like we're rooting down with that outer thigh. Take an inhale to open the chest here. Exhale, both inner thighs hug in even more. I'm telling you again, if it's worth the effort, you'll feel a lot more engagement, a lot more intrinsic support just by getting those inner thighs to engage. Now feel the stretch on the outer thighs, the outer knees. Inhale into your outer hips as well. Shoulders are down. Take one more exhale to hug your spine. Turn this into a deeper back bend. And slowly unravel out of that, moving into our seated twist. Your right foot is stepping to the outside of the left knee. Your left heel can slide in a little closer to your right sit bone. Start by wrapping the forearm or the elbow around the knee. And bring your right hand back behind you. The chest is open. Again, if you would like to go further, wrap your elbow around the front of the knee. You're rooting down through the sole of your right foot. If that's not enough, bring the elbow to the outside of the knee instead. This may be different than the other side, so please find your pose. And of course, you can do the full bound position here if you'd like, right? You can always do that. Me, that just makes my hip flexor hurt, so I'm not gonna go there. Right? Just notice that whatever you're doing, if it's causing tension, it is not worth it. 
This isn't the class to increase body tension. That's not the name of the class. <laughs> right, so we want to reduce our body tension so that we become less stiff as we move through our practice. Please take one final exhale here, bring out one more time. And then very slowly unravel on across your legs. Slide into the middle of your mat. And then holding onto the backs of your thighs, start to roll down and bring your feet up so that you can roll slowly down, bring your knees in. And once your knees are in, just rock it side to side. After rocking side to side a few times, please take any inversion of choice. Any pose that you know will place you upside down. It can be as easy as this before you take running. If you have a wall near you, you can slide your legs and lay them on the wall. If you have your pillow handy, you could add a little more of a, an inversion to this pose by sliding the pillow underneath the pelvis. You can take the legs open and into vishta. You could do whatever you'd like to there. Or you could take a headstand, a handstand, a forearm stand, shoulder stand, or half shoulder stand. The only thing I, I will um, just remind you of that is that your neck is really fragile. It, it's a little more fragile than we think, right? So when we're at home and we don't have the yoga props to support our neck, you have to be even more aware of keeping that natural curvature in the cervical spine. So no flattening out of the neck, in other words. Breathe as deeply as you can here. We are still engaging in an active inhale and an active exhale. On your next inhalation, begin to slowly put, roll out of your inversion wherever you are at. And you can do that in any way that makes sense to you. And there you will find that your body wants to move in the opposite direction. So for me, I'm going to go into a bridge. You may want to go into a fish pose, right? which would mean sliding that pillow out from underneath you, bringing your hands underneath your hooks. Coming back onto the back of the crown as the elbows root down, fish. You may want to do a Sukta Baddha Konasana, which is a pretty good idea because the inner thighs worked harder than any muscle group today, right? They really did their part almost in every single pose. So maybe we let the, the inner thighs stretch you. Maybe we spend some time while the inner thighs are stretching, making sure that the abs feel like they get to stretch as well. So again, whatever pose feels good to you, Stay there for another five breaths. And while you're in this pose, make sure that there is no tension added to your body because of doing this pose. Whatever pose you're choosing is there to, it's placed in this part of our practice to relax us, to stabilize the spine even more, and to give ourselves the opportunity to prepare for Shabbat. Take one more inhale, go ahead and then in what, from whatever pose you are in, just roll out of that and roll right into your final resting position, either into a star position or shavasana or any propped up pose that you would like to take. If you have um, props at home or a bunch of pillows and you want to prop yourself up in whatever way makes sense to you, please do. Close your eyes. Let your breath become very subtle now. And notice how you're feeling. You should feel like you got a great workout, but you should also feel like there's a lot more flow in the body. You should feel freer, more open. We did work really hard today on those forward folds. So you may feel <clears throat> like your back is a little, uh, overworked, it might even feel strained a bit. So if you could make sure that your lower back is sinking into the ground, right? That we're not over, we're not letting the back arch here in Shavasana. So just take a moment and think of all of the internal organs, the heaviness of those organs weighing down 
and the weight of those internal organs moving the, the lower spine into the earth. This is a very calming way to be because if our internal organs are relaxed and sinking, it means we're safe, right? Otherwise we would be in fight or flight and we're not, right? So again, we're sending a very clear message by letting the, the weight of our internal body remind the back to allow itself to be supported by the earth. And when we feel the support of the earth here, we feel a tremendous sense of equanimity. Please encourage your mind to stay in that feeling, to notice that feeling, to become more familiar with feeling in a state where we're not stressed and tense. I'd like to end our practice today with a quote by Rumi. I rarely quote Rumi because everyone quotes Rumi, but this is pretty apropos for today's world. Try not to resist the changes that come your way. Instead, let life live through you. Do not worry that your life is turning upside down. How do you know that the side you are used to is better than the one to come? Try not to resist the changes coming your way. Instead, let life live through you. Do not worry that your life is turning upside down. How do you know that the side you are used to is better than the one to come? For these last few moments of class, Notice any last resistance in your body. Notice any last need to hold the tension that we've maybe held for a long time, right? We get comfortable with it, but let it go. Check in with the muscles of your face and let all of the tension in the face go. Check in with your back again. Let that tension and resistance to letting go of tension also recede. And for just a few more moments, be in a body that is not in resistance, that is fully surrendering itself to the pull of the earth, to the meaning of this practice, and to the deliberate intention we have set today. And now please allow yourself to stay on in, in Shavasana or in your resting pose. Just bring your hands to your heart center. Take a full deep breath in. Notice again how you are feeling. Become more familiar with this part of yourself. Identify more with this than with the word stiffer body. And thank you so much for being here this uh, afternoon. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Namaste.